Hello everybody, I'm Zvon, and this is Zvon's Guide Talk for Wednesday, 10th of August, 2022. And uh, you know what you know what time it is, it's unpacked time. Today's episode is all about, well, to an extent, uh, sa- about Samsung's unpacked event, and obviously their new devices that have just come out, the Z Flip 4, the Z Fold 4, the Galaxy Watch 5 and 5 Pro, and the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro. Uh, obviously new goodies from Samsung, and uh, and also potentially a new BTS song, I mean... Well, it's it's they're gonna premiere it like later today, as as I understand it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but um, oh well, I haven't had a chance to obviously try these devices in in person, so I can't tell you my overall impressions. But we're gonna talk about these new devices, and we're definitely gonna geek out over the little details. And basically, if there's one way to describe these new devices, it's basically a refinement over um, over a leap bound as it was with last year's as foldables. But yeah, uh, we're going to definitely talk about this along with other uh, key uh, news, including Google obviously uh, bringing a ramped version of Android TV and uh, Oppo and OnePlus phones are banned in Germany. You can't buy new OnePlus or Oppo phones in Germany because of a, because of a IP dispute uh, from with Nokia, which is pretty crazy. We're going to get into that also later in the, in the show. But yeah, without further ado, let's just get unpacking, shall we? All right, so if there's one thing to describe these new folding phones, the Z Flip 4 and the Z Fold 4, they're not really, uh, they're not like giant leaps like the previous generation. They're more like uh, incremental refinements. They're basically, they're polishing really the edges of these phones, and they're not really so many game-changing or groundbreaking new features or functionalities, but basically these phones are essentially more or less are nearly similar to the to the previous generation but as i said there are improvements in a lot of places uh again slight tweaks there and there improvements really uh obviously with an incremental upgrade let's just say it's kind of like how it was when the s3 and the s4 came out the following year and then the s4 really was just like a more polished s3 with a nicer display and obviously a nicer design and all and that's kind of what these two folding phones are in a way so uh, first we're going to touch on the z flip 4 and basically, the it really is a refinement compared to the uh, Z Flip 3. To start with, you have a more you got a more compact design. It's hard to describe it uh, through through my voice, kind of. It's it's much it's more compact, kind of, in a way, slightly compact. You got a smaller hinge. You got a matte glass back, a uh, Gorilla Glass Victus glass on both sides, inside and out, along with a uh, aluminium armor uh, frame, which is pretty nice to have. I mean, it, it it's solid and you can definitely feel it in your hand. And it's also, it's also got a matte finish, so it's n- no fingerprints on it in a way. Uh, but on top of that, you essentially have uh, two upgraded, you got a whole lot of upgrades on the inside. First of all, you got the Snapdragon Plus 8 Gen Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chip along with an improved cameras on the back uh, including a bigger 12 megapixel uh, main camera and obviously improved 12 megapixel ultra wide as i said there are no uh, there are no flagship cameras but again they'll do the job for most people out there so that's something to keep in mind if we talk about the ca- uh, the, the cameras at the back you have a 12 megapixel f2.2 1.12 uh, micrometer ultra wide with 123 degree field of view and a 12 megapixel uh, wide, or wide angle, regular, pretty much, dual pixel autofocus, OIS, which is nice to have on a folding flip phone, f1.8, 1.8 micrometer uh, camera, which is, again, as I said, nice to have, and you could say the display is more or less like last year in a way, uh, the, it's, a, it's only a touch bit bigger because they've sort of shrinked the be- the hinge around the bezel, you could say, around the edges, so it looks a little, it looks a touch bit bigger, uh, you won't be able to really tell unless you look at side by side with the Z Flip 3, in a way. Uh, but yeah, uh, you have a six point, still have a 6.7 inch FHD plus AMOLED display, 120 hertz, and then you got a 1.9 inch AMOLED display on the outside. Uh, again, like the Z Flip 3, and, um, and you got a 10 megapixel selfie camera on the inside, so that's pretty cool to uh, to say the least. You got a slightly bigger battery compared to last year, a 3700 million power battery. And again, when you combine it with the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1, the Snapdragon chip, it'll definitely give you more optimization, obviously better battery experience, generally speaking. So that's something good. Uh, that's something interesting in a way. 
But really, the upgrades kind of it's outside of the improved design and of durability, and obviously the IP IPX uh, is it the is it IPX IP4X? I think it was IP8X. No, IP yeah IPX8 uh, water resistance. So that's very nice to have. But also the there are some also improvements on the software side. So first of all, now you have a new improved flex cam mode, and that lets you take a hands-free video or selfies at different angles, like previously. But obviously improved there's also like you can hold your phone like a camcorder and record videos and that's pretty sweet and i think that that shows the real selling point of a z flip 4 compared to say a fold 4 or competing folding phones is it's built for casual users who want to sort of capture moments and obviously share uh stuff uh to others and as i said it's built for casual users more and also it's just a nice little phone to have in a way uh so that's pretty cool so flex cam mode's pretty cool on top of the quick shot uh, an upgraded quick shot apparently uh, so you can record videos you can take photos and uh, also you could switch to flex mode so you can record hands free without stopping the video so that's pretty cool and now you can do portrait uh, shots with quick shots so that's pretty cool in a way but more than everything the obviously Samsung touched on the unpacked events it's its strength really that is partnerships and collaborations with major technology companies and brands and this time uh, obviously continuing on their partnership with Meta, which used to be Facebook, uh, to offer an enhanced camera uh, for Instagram and WhatsApp and Facebook and Facebook Messenger. Now you can use that flex cam functionality straight in those apps. No, no pixelated, grainy, no grainy mess. Now, if you if you use an Android phone, and you'll know this better than me, and everyone knows this, if you if you use the main camera app, you use the full, you get the full quality. And then when you switch to WhatsApp or Instagram, you get a grainy, you get a cloudier, grainier picture. But that's not going to be the case on this, the Z Flip 4, and same for the Z Fold 4. You won't get this on that also. Again, it's leveraging what, uh, what Samsung's been doing on the S22, for example, offering an a improved camera experience on third-party apps. Uh, and, a good, and it's good to see that FlexCam will work on third-party apps without any issues. It'll bring the full camera quality over to those other competing apps. So that's pretty good to see in a way. And again... You have that 3700 million power battery. It comes in four wonderful colors. It comes in uh, in basically black, um, light blue, uh, Bora purple, but it's basically, it's purple basically. They call it Bora, uh, which is nice. And, and a kind of a, ro a faint rose gold color. One thing I would say compared to last year's is for Flip is, uh, last year's Z Flip is it's, it has a matte back. So that's something to definitely take into consideration, uh, I guess. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And you're talking about uh, fast charging. It offers, let's just see, 25 watt f or higher fast charging. So you can get up to half, 50% charge in 30 minutes. And yeah, in terms of memory, you have 8 gigabytes of RAM exclusively, but you can get anywhere between 128 and 512 gigabytes of storage. So that's pretty cool nonetheless. And yes, you have IPX8 water and dust resistance. It comes with one UI 4.1, which obviously comes with all these nice features like flex cam and much, much more. And obviously Android 12 is available out of the gate. Um, and as I said, it has, it, this Z Flip 4 has a smaller hinge technically. So uh, that should help in a way. And in an improved ultra thin glass, which again, will come in handy. Again, if you've had last year's Z Flip 3 and you use the Z Flip 4, uh, you might notice a little bit of a difference in a way. So that's something good. To keep in mind something good really to to think about uh 5g is available on here bluetooth 5.2 is supported and yeah it's a pretty interesting uh phone and here's the here's the uh here's the crazy bit this folding phone will start from 999 dollars a thousand bucks just like last year and i think that's pretty cool because obviously we've had the supply chain crisis and obviously some phones have started to cost a bit more than usual so that's pretty cool uh to see and again, it's kind of awesome to see that Samsung is still keeping the same prices. Also the same for the Z Fold 4, which you're going to move on to now. The Z Fold 4 is kind of that nice phablet that we all come to know. And again, like the Flip, it's not really a massive day or night improvement. It's just a refinement. Uh, but this one's more noticeable compared to the Flip. And that's what I would argue for. Uh, it's more, to more noticeable if that's what I'm trying to describe here. So uh, they touched on this premises for the pro users in a way. So uh, if I could find it, that is. Uh, so first of all, you have an improved 
you essentially have an improved hinge that doesn't have uh, that doesn't have gears going between. It's it's designed so you can essentially fold it outwards and obviously keep it at an angle, obviously uh, like a laptop and obviously uh, at different angles. So that's pretty cool. So you have an improved uh, you have an improved hinge, which is slimmer. It's lighter weight because, for example, the display on the inner folding display uh, has been they've taken out the metal shield at the back but as I said they've strengthened the inner LCD which is very nice to see and I've also added padding so that it absorbs shocks or obviously bumps and and uh, and jolts and obviously the phone folding in and out um, so that's pretty interesting in a way and again it comes with IPX8 water resistance like the Z Flip 4 obviously it's not it's not designed for dust resistance so that's definitely to keep in mind and like the flip 4 it comes with armor with armor or aluminium frames and gorilla glass victus plus so i've kind of gone through everything that that need to be said about these folding phones it's pretty cool in a way uh, but yeah the fold 4 also like the flip 4 come with features a snapdragon 8 plus gen 1 like last year's foldables coming with a snapdragon chip instead of a uh, instead of a Exynos variant, which is interesting, but obviously because Samsung has teamed up with uh, Qualcomm to offer the latest Snapdragon chips on all Samsung phones going forward, in a way. So that's that's a nice. That's again, this is again one strength of Samsung that they are able to have world class partnerships to bring cool features and obviously offer good technology, really, because uh, that's the strength of Samsung, really, with open software and hardware, and again, standard off the shelf software and hardware. Uh, Samsung devices really shine uh, on their own, sort of. So that's that's pretty cool. But yeah, I mean, if you look past the hardware, um, and and obviously it's more or less the same 7.6 inch main display like last year. It's again a little bit big, touch bit bigger because obviously they've shrinked the uh, bezels around the inner and outer display. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit bigger. You can't tell unless you look side by side with the previous generation Z Fold 3. So yeah, uh, along with that. You, and also, uh, the the display inner display features a scatter type subpixel arrangement, so you can't so you so the inner display camera won't be that visible compared to the Z Fold Three. It's kind of noticeable uh, in some circumstances, but yeah, I mean it's um, you could tell poor, almost. So that's pretty cool in a way. So we've t touched on the hardware features. We're gonna move on to software of the Z Fold Four and not the Fold Three. And um, and interestingly, it's the first Android. Uh, it's the first Android foldable. Let's say that comes with Android 12L, designed by Google for foldables, which is nice to have. Another, and this is going to be the big one if you've used the Z Fold 3, and you're gonna. This is going to be. A, I think this is a big software upgrade in a way, and that's a brand new taskbar at the bottom of the inner foldable display. When you fold that, fold the Z Fold 4 out. You have a new taskbar that essentially gives you access to popular apps and again your recent apps and app pairs. It's again an improvement on previous iterations of the same feature, a floating sort of pop-up where you can see all your apps open recently and obviously you can access all your apps from there. But now it's a proper section of the interface as the taskbar, so that's pretty cool. And also now it's easy to sort of start multitasking, can pop up multiple apps at once. So that's pretty cool in a way. And obviously if you get a, Z, a S Pen, not a Z Pen. I was about to say Z Pen. Why? Why is it a Z Pen? Anyways, if you get the S Pen separately, um, which you can buy separately, obviously on top of it, uh, you're able to obviously make the most of the Z Fold Four, which is I think is again a workaholics machine, nonetheless. So that's pretty cool. And uh, now, uh, thanks to their partnerships with Google and Microsoft, uh, things like drag and drop, so drag and drag and drop will work uh, comfortably. And obviously, there will be support for their apps, which is nice to have. Again, it's not really a big upgrade, but again, it's nice to have in a way, and um, and yeah, and it's nice to see that it has Android 12L in a way, so that's pretty cool. And also the taskbar again will make you will essentially give you a PC style experience, basically. It's a phablet, so tablets are kind of like s compact laptops, let's just say. It's very hard to describe it, but it's like a compact laptop. But then again, pretty cool regardless. Yeah, if we touch upon the camera, for example, of the Z Fold 4, you have a 10 megapixel selfie camera on the front, in, on the inner display, that is under the display itself, so that's pretty cool in a way. A f uh, that's on the outside, sorry. And you have a 4 megapixel 
other display camera on the inside on the inner display. So that's pretty interesting. The 10 megapixel selfie camera is on the outside on the other display. Uh, the 4 megapixel, it's not as I said high resolution, but again, they say it's improved, but we'll have to see for ourselves. Uh, on the outside, you have three 12 megapixel, uh, you have three cameras pretty much a 12 megapixel uh, ultra wide angle camera, f2.2, kind of similar to the Z Fold uh, Flip 4's ultra wide angle camera, um, and you have a 50 megapixel wide angle main sensor with OIS and a dual pixel autofocus and f1.0 aperture, 10, mega, 10 megapixel telephoto with three times optical zoom, naturally 30x digital zoom, so that's pretty cool in a way. The Z Fold 4, on the other hand, uh, comes with uh, up to only 12 gigabytes of RAM and up to a one terabyte of storage, up from, say, 256 gigabytes of storage, so that's pretty cool. And again, like I mentioned earlier, IPX8 water resistance. And again, Bluetooth 5.2 and 5G because it has the 8 plus Gen 1. It's cool to see that they have an 8 plus Gen 1 and will probably make it a great value for money in a way. Gonna add this here. Uh, additionally, the Z Fold 4 has a 4,400 million power battery and 25 watt fast charging out of the gate. And also you get two physical SIM card slots, depending on the market, of course. In some markets, you may be able to get only one SIM card, but obviously that depends on. Uh, but the, there's no mention of micro SD card support, so that's something to keep in mind. If uh, if you are looking to get one of these phones with the intention of expanding the storage later on, might as, you might as well get one with the storage you will possibly need as is. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and speaking of price already, the Z Fold 4, uh, we'll, we'll start at $1,799, so that's roughly, again, uh, $1,800 $1, combined for uh, the Z Fold 4. And uh, again, just like, the price is just like last year, and I think that's pretty good uh, in a way, and I'm not complaining, frankly, because, again, it's just, um, it's, uh, it's a good option in a way. Uh, so what we basically have with these phones is uh, they are refinements basically they feature improved hinges they definitely feature uh improved processors cameras and also all sorts of interesting uh, software features including flex mode and a new flex mode touchpad uh in a way and um and again uh improved software features and it's more optimized compared to previous uh foldables and as I said, it has the 8 plus Gen 1. So I honestly think it would be a great value uh, for anyone looking to get these phones. And obviously, uh, there's no better time to buy a foldable than probably much, pretty much now. It's, uh, it's starting to sort of crack out of its early adopter shell. And it's about to hit the mainstream. And I think that's pretty interesting in a way. As I said, um, so you have the improved durability. You have the improved hinges. You have the improved processor. And you got the... Uh, and as I said, you got the improved software functionality. I mean, what more would you want to? What more do we want to ask in a way? So again, pretty solid uh, imp refinements. Let's just say that. All right, and interestingly enough, uh, we're talking about phones and obviously uh, materials and improvements and durability. Uh, the environment is obviously uh, of significant importance, and apparently. And these new foldables incorporate plastic-bound plastics into key components, 100% recycled paper for packaging, and um, and apparently for the foldables, uh, sorry for the foldables, yes, yeah, the, it features 58% reduced volume. So basically, they just shipped the phone, <laughs> the charging cable, from the looks of it. But um, and putting obviously just like the S22, probably putting fishnet, uh, recycled fishnet plastic into. Um, into these folding phones. So that's pretty cool in a way. Uh, so the Flip 4 will cost nine, $999 uh, starting, and then the Fold 4 will start from $1799. So again, over $1,700, $1,800, over $1,800 for the Fold in a way. And they'll be, they're available for pre-orders from today, from August 10th. And you will, you'll be able to get them in stores on August 26th in some places. And if you pre-order either of the phones, you should be able to get one year of Samsung Care Plus, which apparently will deliver protection against cracked screens and drops. 
in 51 countries where available. So do check with the Samsung uh, reseller or obviously officially uh, Samsung in your kind of jurisdiction or market uh, where you live kind of a nearby Samsung store or the online store for more information about the Care Plus or, you know, what the policy is for replacing the cracked screens. You'll, it'll, have to, it'll come in handy because folding phones are quite fragile naturally. So something to keep in mind in a way. And that obviously now leads to uh, where would with all these big phones uh should you buy these like which of the z foldable should you get which of the galaxy z foldable phones you should you be getting which one should you get which one is worth i mean which foldable should you be getting the z galaxy z fold or z flip 4 now this is going to be tough, and I think it really, I mean, these phones are improving. They're really polishing up the, the, the couple of flaws that exist in the fo these phones. But I would clearly say these two folding phones have different form factors and potentially different audiences in mind. The Flip is designed for casual, sort of social media savvy users who always share and consume and create content. And again, one a flip phone that is easy to use, it's fun, and well, also they don't want to use their phone way too much to be burned out from it. So the full flip is great for those users, and the price is really competitive. Like the like for thousand dollars, where can you get a eight plus Gen one, especially from Samsung, along with a decent battery life and obviously a cool feature, which is the screen full flips up. So again, it's quite stylish, like the previous Z Flip three. Uh, so it's clearly designed for those who are into their social media and obviously use their phone quite a lot and want, again, a kind of natural phone experience, a flip phone, and you're into that kind of, and you're a millennial or Gen Z and you're into that nostalgia of a flip phone. Yeah, I would re kind of recommend the Z Flip 4. If you're not into the nostalgia or anything, generally for a high-end phone, it's pretty good. They're good for $1,000 kind of, for those kind of users. I mean... It's good value, really. I mean, you can't beat having a folding flip phone, you know? Like, uh, you you get some cool bragging rights. And again, a bit of nostalgia from it, in a way. And on the flip side is the... Get it? <laughs> on the flip side, the Galaxy Z Fold 4 is really the prosumer phone. It's for the work use, power users, workaholics. If you are just a typical phone user, you go through your WhatsApp and YouTube and TikTok, it's not for you. It's not really worth the $1,800 asking price or more than that in some places. It's not worth any any or all of your money unless you use your phone like crazy. I'd probably see myself as someone who used the Z Fold 4 out of the gate. It's nice, again, for productivity. But then also if you're of the productivity kind, you want to use your phone to work and email and multitask. You already might as well be getting the Z Fold 3 because it'll be going on a pretty good discount and obviously it's got older processors and specs, but it should do the job. It'll come in nice and dandy, uh, fine and dandy pretty much uh, for work, for productivity. But then again, if you really need a very nice phone with top-notch cameras with basically some features at S22 in a way, and again, uh, premium performance and productivity and you're an absolute workaholic and you want a proper beast you get the z fold 4 and if you really could be able to appreciate all the functionality and the multitasking and all the experiences you can get with the fold 4 but if you're the kind and also if you have a lot of money and you want to flex they have a really cool phone you might as well get the z fold 4 but if you're not of that audience if you're not of that you know consumer base you can just avoid it really you could you can get an s22 ultra and you can be absolutely happy and you get a very nice experience generally speaking but as uh, if you have a specific need or use, I mean, these folding phones are great. And again, it would be worth the cost of owning them and using them. And obviously the screen, uh, sort of with the wear and tear, it would probably be worth it. But again, if you're just a regular phone user, might as well want to look elsewhere. But again, if you like your social media, you like your, uh, you like your nostalgia, you're a bit of a millennial, you know, you, you are quite nostalgic about flip phones. You love using Instagram or TikTok, you might as well get the Z Flip 4 on the other hand, and then... Again, if you're looking to have a beast, the Z Fold 4 makes sense in a way. So that's something to keep in mind. And uh, again, um, next week's episode, I mean, I'll probably share my hands-on sort of impressions because, I mean, if I go somewhere and obviously I uh, have the phone with me and obviously I have it, uh, have a hands-on really. So that's pretty interesting in a way. It's great to see that this segment is unfolding in a big way. Let's just say that.
All right, we're already talking about uh, new devices come out unpacked. Let's talk about another one other than the phones themselves. Uh, accessories, really, because that's obviously what makes the Galaxy ecosystem tick. So we have the Galaxy Buds 2 Pro, which is obviously the newest earbuds from Samsung. Uh, interestingly, they have a whole bunch of cool new features. It's got it's got a similar design to the Galaxy Buds Pro that we talked about back in 2020, obviously back when we started the podcast. So that's crazy how fast time has flown. Anyways, um, so first up, uh, first of all, you have 10, mil- 10 millimeter drivers. You've got Bluetooth 5.3 connectivity, IPX7 water and uh, water resistance, eight hour battery life on a single charge and 29 hours with the charging case included. And obviously that's with no noise canceling, but if you switch on the noise canceling, you get up to five hours of, of uh, playtime and 18 hours with the battery with a charging case included. So that's pretty cool in a way. And um, apparently it's 15% smaller than the previous Buds Pro. More than everything, it offers hi-fi sound thanks to a thanks to a special proprietary audio codec that Samsung developed uh, that can give you basically 24-bit hi-fi audio along with four, uh, along at the same time with 44 kilohertz audio. So it's hi-fi quality, and also you have 3D audio th- spatial audio support. 360 audio with direct multi-channel sound. So again, you'll literally be able to hear stuff around you. In fact, weirdly enough, they used an example of a super fa- of a F1 car driving around a straight around a corner, around a chicane, and you know the, that drives very fast. I'm sure they're not trying to intend that it's an F1 car, but they're trying to show that the the three 360 sound, the 360 uh, the spatial audio capability. So that's pretty interesting, in a way. And uh, you have advanced intelligent active noise cancellation. Basically, it's active noise cancellation with AI and all sorts of uh, nice goodies added to make it nice and rivaling uh, active noise cancelling premium earbuds. So that's pretty cool. And it comes in three different colors. Zenit Grey. So I'd probably assume that's some funky color that I've... Okay, it's white pretty much. So gr- like granite. Uh, oh no, the black pretty much. Uh, Zenith white and bora purple basically black white and purple and again uh, it comes with 360 degree audio uh, 5.1 channel or 71 point channel where uh, virtual surround sound so that's pretty cool and obviously according to the uh, articles here uh, you will need one ui 4.0 so the very recent version of android and a very new uh, galaxy to get 24-bit hi-fi audio and 360 sound, 360 audio, so hard to describe it without saying, without struggling really, 360 audio pretty much, so that's pretty cool in a way, and HD voice, so you will get crystal clear, uh, you know, recordings from your earbuds if you do that pretty much, so that's pretty cool in a way, and this, these earbuds cost about $229 US, that's the MSRP, so that's pretty cool in a way, and again, it's, again, there's nothing quite like it, you know, that, that's that's the point, really. Um, oh, and there's a, another cool bit about the Buds 2 Pro. On top of being able to find it from your from the app, companion app, if you lose it, uh, there's auto switch. So if you have a late, if you have this year's Samsung Smart TV or newer, sort of the 2022 or newer Samsung Smart TV, you could automatically switch. Uh, you could, you could um, connect to your Smart TV and basically get a private listening mode with the earbuds. So that's pretty cool in a way. And um, it's 229 really. So it's kind of, a, it's a nice accessory to go with the S22 and the Z foldables, the Flip 4 and the Fold 4 and the S22 in general. So pretty good if you ask me. And if you're already talking about folding, if you're already talking about accessories to go with your new foldables, we got the Galaxy Watch 5 and Watch 5 Pro. So this is pretty interesting in a way. You have a whole bunch of cool features um, in a way, uh, to start with, you got the Galaxy Watch 5 comes with uh, interesting uh, health tracking. You got a bioactive sensor that comes with optical heart rate, electrical heart signal, and a bioelectric, bioelectrical impedance analysis. So it uses three different sensors pretty much to uh, get an extensive reading of your health, of your, of your uh, heart health in a way. And on top of that, you get blood pressure monitoring and ECG monitoring, and that's certified in over 63 markets compared to, say, Apple that's only available in, say, in the U.S. and certain markets. So that's pretty good to see with, uh, what Samsung's doing here with people's health. Interestingly enough, you get co- essentially a comprehensive 
fitness tracking and obviously you got body composition measurement tool so you get a full snapshot this is kind of similar to what apple offers on apple watches you got smart things integration obviously it has Wear OS by google uh, giving you access to lots of third-party apps and functionality in terms of features you got sleep coaching and sleep scores which you can see what i'm talking about uh, enhanced sleep tracking so that's pretty cool you get 13 percent larger battery and generally you would get uh, 30 per and you get 30 percent faster fast charging so you be able to get eight hours of sleep tracking with eight minutes of charging so that's pretty cool in a way and we're talking about the design pretty much this has a sapphire crystal display uh, which offers a 60 percent harder outer layer so it's quite durable and again resistant to scratches and cracks so that's pretty cool in a way and if we already kind of already are talking about specs kind of it uh, has an al armor aluminium framing like the Z Fold 4 and Flip 4 with a sapphire crystal display. It comes in 44 and 40 millimeter uh, sizes and has a Super AMOLED display. A Exynos W920 dual core chip, so kind of similar to the previous Galaxy watch in a way, who knows. 16 gigs of storage, 1.5 gigabytes of RAM, not really necessary, but again, cool. 410 or 284 milliamp hour battery depending on the size of the watch so the bigger one would be for the 44 millimeter and the lat and latter so on and so forth on top of that you have a flatter base so you can obviously charge with the puck so that's very nice but also gives you more accurate reading so you have that bioactive sensor temperature sensor accelerometer barometer um and gyro sensor geomagnetic sensor and light sensor and also there is like a light sensor so apparently it will give you weight measurement real time weight measurement uh in the watch 5 i don't think it's in the pro also but it's all both on the pro and the main galaxy watch 5 so that's pretty cool in a way and it's a nice feature to have let's just say that um interestingly so there's the galaxy watch 5 it's it's a pretty cool watch in a way um it starts from 200 it doesn't say the price here so i'll have to bring pull that up but oh well oh we have the price here. so the galaxy watch 5 uh galaxy watch 5 costs 279 for the bluetooth version and 329 for lte and obviously the pro is pricey we're gonna okay let's just talk about the pro pretty much uh here and here out um let's just say this is built for adventure lovers and for those who are fitness geeks and i think they're looking at the fact that apple could be launching a apple watch pro so they made kind of a similar sort of smart watch that targets that audience in a way to start with you have a sapphire crystal uh casing uh, you have sapphire crystal display uh glassing glass let's just say that with a durable titanium casing that protects it from bumps and cracks and whatever nature brings on uh interestingly with a protruded uh with a protruded uh bezel design so hard to pronounce it but protruded uh bezel design so you know so it's kind of uh synced in so that's pretty interesting and you got a debuckle sports band so um it has, it's basically a buckle so it's sort of uh you can uh, open it up uh, to take it out and obviously put it on so that's pretty cool in a way it's 60 percent larger than watch 4 already it's got GPX capability, so you can create a route and obviously then share it through, Gal through Samsung Health to your friends. And obviously you can go, and they can go on similar hiking and cycling paths. So that's pretty cool in a way. And you get turn-by-turn -turn directions, obviously thanks to Wear OS built right in. So that's pretty cool in a way. And a trackback feature. So if you ever get lost, you can click one go and obviously you can uh, get find your way back. So that's pretty cool in a way. Uh, basically, it's a tougher Galaxy Watch 5. So I think that's a nice thing to have, uh, but generally speaking, you have the same sensor, uh, same sensors and same tracking as the Galaxy Watch 5. It's basically a nicer casing and it's tougher. It's built for the outdoors and you got a 590 milliamp hour battery. So that's pretty cool to say the least. So yeah, basically the Pro is just basically a tougher a more rugged version of the Galaxy Watch 5. And then the Galaxy Watch 5 is obviously much nicer. One thing I will kind of mention is that there's no, there's the infamous watch dial, the, the you know the, the, the dial that would rotate and go around sort of, and you spin it, and obviously it, 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 you, it's a 
the crown the dial sort of that's gone on the galaxy watch 5 so that's something to keep in mind if you're looking to upgrade and obviously you still have your galaxy watch from before so again something to look at something to think about in a way but regardless it's a pretty cool uh it's a pretty cool smart watch to say the least and the same would be said for the galaxy buds 2 pro the, but that one the other one as i said the galaxy uh, buds 2 pro as i would call it uh, it's a nice accessory to have with these uh, with these phones, but yeah, pretty cool accessories from Samsung really, and generally cool uh, foldable uh, foldable phones from Samsung in a way. So um, oh, and I would want to add one thing here, and that is that the what, if you are looking to get the Z Fold Four, the one terabyte spec, uh, that's only available on Samsung's website. So if you are looking to buy that and you really want to do it, you can do that. Obviously, it's only available through Samsung's website. So do keep that in mind. But generally speaking, pretty great devices, I mean, to say the least. I mean, again, great stuff nonetheless. All right, so we've already talked about the folding phones uh, from Samsung. Let's move on to folding phones from other brands because Samsung obviously is the most iconic brand right now in folding phones in a way. And it's one that we all kind of recognize and know, even though obviously if you are an Android fanboy, you will know that there are lots of folding phones that have come out in the past year from so many different brands, including Oppo and Huawei, but the thing is, obviously, they're only available in China. But we got another uh, new folding phone that's coming out. But obviously, uh, we don't know if it's going to be released worldwide. But it'll it's pretty much China only at this point of time, and that's the Xiaomi Mix Fold Two. Uh, tomorrow, August eleventh, they're doing a launch event for the phone at two p.m. GMT plus three time. That's where I live, so just between. Uh, it would be seven p.m. China time, and they're going to show off the Mi uh, the Mi Mix. You could say they're going to show off the Mix Fold 2, uh, which is their fo sequel to their folding phone that they released last year. I don't even know when they released it. I think it was last year. Yeah, probably. Um, and that's interesting. And apparently it'll come with a camera that obviously is made by Leica. Obviously features lenses from Leica. So that's pretty interesting in a way. On top of that, it, it's kind of it's going to be Xiaomi's answer to the Z Fold 3 or the Z Fold 4, most likely, given it's got a uh, book... It's got a bookcase design, as we'd say it. It's confusing to describe uh, folding phone designs, but there are two popular ones. There's the flip phone design, there's the uh, bookcase design, and this one is the bookcase design. It folds out like a book, which is pretty interesting. What expect in the Show Me Mix Fold 2? You know, it's so hard to say. Uh, it's so hard to say Show Me without mentioning me, but oh well. Uh, what expect in the Show Me Mix Fold 2? The latest Qualcomm chips, the Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 or the 8 Gen 1 most likely, given it's a folding phone, so I don't think performance would matter. You need to be efficient, of course, with battery life, so probably in Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. 8 Plus Gen 1 would be nice to have in a way, on top of a 120Hz display. Interestingly enough, uh, they've also posted a teaser on, the so on social media in China, uh, obviously hinting at the event launch event tomorrow and it mentioned how the phone when unfolded is 5.4 millimeters thick and obviously when you fold it up it's 11.4 millimeters so apparently uh, i mean xiaomi ceo liu jun was so bothered by the bulk of current uh, of current folding foldable phones um <laughs> you can say that samsung and oppo and vivo's foldables that uh they're quite out that this new xiaomi folding phone the Mix Fold 2, what, one thing they were out to do was essentially make it compact and make it, uh, let's say, uh, not so thick. Uh, so that's pretty interesting in a way. Um, by by comparison, speaking of which, the original, uh, the first gen Mi Mix Fold, uh, you could say, uh, measured 7.6 millimeters unfolded and 17.2 millimeters folded uh, combined. So that's uh, that's a decent that's a decent jump let's just say that of two sh shedding two millimeters probably so that's pretty interesting and uh, big thanks to gsm arena for this scoop uh it's pretty interesting in a way and uh, we've already talked about folding phones uh, we're going to mention also the motorola razor now last week they were supposed to obviously show off the razor um the new razor for this year but that didn't really happen due to circumstances beyond their control 
and obviously it didn't make sense you know some threat in the background and then you released a folding phone that would not be fun that would be funny but obviously not so funny but now obviously Motorola is going ahead with launching showing off the 2022 Razer and the X30 Pro uh, they're doing an event also tomorrow at 2 p.m. China time that would be roughly if uh, you do term per in terms of time zone that's basically um, that would be about 9 a.m. Britain time so pretty early in the morning yeah 9 a.m. probably tomorrow also uh, quite early, earlier before show me drops it's me uh, it's mix fold too and um, and we already know a lot about the Razer 2022 it's gonna have the 8 gen 1 I don't think it's gonna have the 8 plus gen 1 I remember they mentioned that they this their phone will come with the 8 gen 1 originally we've talked about it earlier on the show so if you want to hear more about the 2022 Razer I've got an episode early in the year uh, do look it up if you're already listening from a particular podcast app uh, so that's something worth uh, mentioning and again as I said uh, let's see what Motorola and Xiaomi have uh, Motorola is basically no Lenovo in a way but Lenovo and Xiaomi let's see what they have on offer uh, tomorrow eventually yeah uh, it's pretty interesting stuff nonetheless all right we got other, as I said we got other stuff to talk about uh, let's talk about Android TV Android TV obviously has become very popular in the past couple of years we've seen a barrage of smart TVs and streaming sticks uh, that run Google's operating system essentially the living room version of Android and now Google is looking to add more functionality on top of the fact that Android TV is one thing there's Google TV which is the sort of curated it's kind of the answer to, to the Apple TV app and it has a mix of Ability, it basically offers movie rentals and obviously curates content from all the big streaming services which is pretty cool in a way and obviously that comes as an app on your Android phones uh, already but now Google's looking to do more much more with Android TV and Google TV in general and they obviously announced it to their partners at a closed door event last month uh, and again they mentioned their better together plans to create sort of an ecosystem of um, uh, again based on Android third-party gear but they all run Android and all integrate Google services and your Google account and again uh, if it's all tied to Google account it'll then work on other devices and already obviously Wear OS for Google has been a thing and again Android TV has been around and it's been very popular in a way but and they're, again they're now looking to add more functionality first firstly uh, they're now uh, they'll give you the ability next year to integrate your Fitbit or Wear OS device to give you heartbeat, heart rate tracking and burn calories and again other real-time fitness tracking straight to your Android TV or Google TV at best and uh, what that means is with an API and all uh, if you use a fitness app or you use a workout app on your Android TV uh, and you've linked it again through Google account to your Fitbit or Wear OS device, you can again get that real-time data from a smartwatch onto your TV, and you can see your heart rate in real time. Now, if you th if you're probably sensing something familiar or you're feeling some deja vu, deja vu probably, you'll know that Apple offers this integration with the Apple Watch and Apple Fitness Plus on the Apple TV. If you have an Apple TV and you use Apple Fitness Plus and have an Apple Watch, your Apple Watch tracking data pops up on the TV when you're using Apple Fitness Plus and doing a workout using that service and uh, and also but the thing really with Apple TV is that it only works with Fitness Plus Google's solution apparently according to protocol we've reported on this uh, is look going to be kind of open so third party apps can access it including you know the likes of Peloton and many other god knows how many uh, work, live workout services exist so that's pretty cool in a way Apple obviously has been doing it with uh, with uh, fitness plus and uh, the Apple TV and the watch of course but Google's looking to be a bit more open in a way uh, so you actually can now do video workouts but then again on top of that you can pip in data from your smartwatch so you can see how fast your heartbeats running that's pretty cool in a way and apparently they're gonna roll it out next year so again that's according to the sources at protocol so that's pretty interesting in a way also their plan is by 2024 to offer in more integration with smart home gear on Android TV so you could see your security cameras, you can control your lights, air conditioning 
And I think that this would be building on the functionality that already has been there with Google Assistant. Uh, you can have Google Assistant skills, you can connect your smart home gear uh, through with Google Assistant, and I think they're gonna add that to Android TV. That's how I look at it, I th again, uh, this is our, this functionality, the ability to see your security cameras and control your smart home, has kind of already been on Apple TV and Amazon Fire TV uh, platforms. Uh, Apple and Amazon have have it have had it in a way through their own sort of smart home ecosystems, and now Google's bringing in a more gargantuous uh, effort uh, here with this integration, and it's going to be available by 2024. So we'll see. That that looks interesting. Another one, a third one is. Uh, apparently, they're looking to turn Nest speakers uh, into wireless speakers. This, again, again, very similar to what Apple is doing with Apple TV and the HomePods, where you can connect your HomePods to your Apple TV because they share data through a single Apple ID. And Google is obviously looking to do this also with their Nest speakers at the moment. It would make it an additional selling point because... From the looks of it, it seems like Google can't really sell enough Nest speakers, and they're not more, any more useful than just being a nice smart speaker for Google Assistant, um, in a way. But also, that eventually they're going to bring the support to third-party speakers, which again, I'm probably hint. This probably is hinting on the fact that they're building on the Google Assistant integration, and they're going to add in this ability to connect your Android TV, connect wireless speakers they already have. They're not really connected to the TV directly through to an auxiliary jack or anything wirelessly. That'll be pretty neat, of course, and it'll be coming in handy for those who have Android TV boxes and, again, full-on sets. So that's pretty cool in a way. On top of that, uh, they're also actively working, I guess this is according to protocol, they're actively working on bringing FastPair over uh, to to Google TV devices with you if people have their own Pixel Buds and if they're linked the same Google I account they can pair it onto the Google TV devices in real time so that's pretty neat and again they're adding more features and that's nice to see in a way but uh, here's the downside now this is the real big downside and that means that there are probably going to be not many devices out there that will support uh, a new version of Android TV or Google TV uh, to be able to do all these features apparently uh, obviously, the deeper smart home integration, the fit again, your the the fitness tracking, the deeper fitness tracking, the wireless speaker support. It probably would have to come with a new software update up logically, and that probably means that devices would need to be more capable than ever. Um, we have smart TVs that come with four gigs of storage to download a few apps, probably to run Netflix and YouTube, and that's pretty much it. And as I said, again usually are quite bare bones in terms of hardware power because they're again not that powerful and they don't really need much power to run so that's interesting but again also according to protocol now that google is requiring that for for tv makers and again for hardware partners to have uh, to support bluetooth 5.0 offer 16 gigabytes or more of storage uh, that's interesting because for example the current chromecast that's available uh, that comes with google tv only has eight gigabytes of memory, so I don't know how Android 13 will work on it. I'm probably assuming they'll probably either by the, by that point by next year they'll probably have a new Chromecast in the wings. Uh, who knows? So that's pretty cool in a way, and there are quite a lot of features that they've yet to bring up. But basically, uh, they're looking to bring in fitness tracking. They're going to bring in support for wireless speakers. You can connect directly connected to your smart TV so you could again blast off audio from your internal speakers straight down to wireless speakers and that's very nice to have and also kind of adding another cool use case for those Nest speakers because they're again Google Nest Max the Nest sort of um, the Nest Hub I would say their speakers they're not really selling like hotcakes and there's not any more useful features other than Google Assistant being there so that's pretty interesting in a way and um, yeah, I mean, it's really cool that they are looking to bring these features. I really hope they deliver on this and they actually do offer it within the next year or two. It'll probably increase the appeal of something like uh, Android TV over, say, Apple or uh, Fire TV because those other uh, ecosystems are more appealing to consumers potentially for their, again, for the more pragmatic feature sets. But I think the only selling point of Android TV is that the side loading and again, the wide selection of supported apps in a way. And again, 
Google services. You can't beat having Google services on the big screen. There are only a few devices out there that can run everything from Google in one place. So again, good to see that Google is working and working on improving Android TV. Uh, that's uh, that's a pretty good development, regardless. Alrighty, this actually now leads us to the end of today's episode or this week's episode in general. What do you think of everything you've heard today? The new Samsung foldables, the fact that OnePlus and Oppo can't sell their phones in Germany anymore because of a patent infringement and USB-C charging cases for the AirPod, which I honestly think won't really happen if you're on in the, even the next year if you ask me. What do you think? Let me know. I'm on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at say underscore mount 99 Follow me there. Uh, drop a DM. Say hi if you can. And yeah. Uh, share this podcast to your friends and family. Definitely a way to boost the show because we need more people to listen. And I'll probably make the whole hamster wheel of podcasting work, in my opinion. And um, subscribe if you're already listening and uh, so you don't miss another episode. And again, a good way to support the show, obviously, if you can. Uh, subscribe if you're, wherever you're listening right now. And uh, yeah, till next week, this is Aboman signing out where we are, whatever you're up to. I hope you have a wonderful day. And again, thank you for listening. And uh, I'll hopefully see you next week in another episode of Mounds Guys Talk. All right. Take care of yourselves. And again, thank you for listening. All right. Ciao.